today's lesson is all about three-dimensional vocabulary. Um, I'm going to start off by saying my allergies are acting up, so um, I do have a cough drop in, and I might have to take a couple sips of water, but hopefully we can get through this. So um, three-dimensional shapes, and the chapter is chapter 10, lesson four, the materials you're going to need. Your spiral notebook, you could simply copy down the vocabulary words and all of the pieces of information. It would be really helpful if you could go back to the um, video site, and in the description I put a link for um, a copy of the vocabulary, and then you can just fill in the chart as we talk. But if you don't have access to a printer or you don't want to print out a copy of it, you certainly can write it down as well. Um, the only vocabulary that I'm expecting you to know ahead of time really is base equals bottom. You're going to hear me talk about the word base and make sure that you know that base means bottom of a shape. All right, so um, this is what the worksheet looks like and you've got two charts on the top and the bottom. And the top, top of the chart just simply talks about different types of three-dimensional shapes. So I have um, a series of three-dimensional shapes here. And, you know, this is typical of most boxes you might have in your house, a cereal box or a tissue box, anything like that. This is a example of a solid. A solid is just any name for a three-dimensional figure. Any three-dimensional figures are considered solids, okay? Faces, when you're looking at a shape, a face is a flat surface, a flat surface on each of the sides, okay? Those are called faces. These are edges, edges, where those two faces intersect. The corners are called vertices, that's the plural, singular would be vertex. One vertex, there are eight vertices on this shape. And when you take this and cut that um, tissue box and spread it out and make it flat, this is what it looks like. That is called a net. A net is what you can take, a pattern of sorts, a pattern that you can take and cut out and fold up to make your three-dimensional shape. Okay. All three-dimensional shapes can be flattened out, and you can have a pattern to cut, cut it out and then make that three-dimensional shape. You'll be doing that in class some, and you do need to become familiar with, if you look at this net, what shape would that make? Okay. Now, um, there are different kinds of three-dimensional shapes, and what I need you to become familiar with is the difference between a prism and a pyramid. Any kind of prism is going to have two bases. This is an example of a prism because it has a base here and here. Two bases, or here and here, depending on how you're holding it. This is another example of a prism. It has a base here and a base here. Not a prism, only one base called a pyramid. It's going to be pointy on one end. <coughs> now, um, definition for a rectangular prism. Rectangular prism is going to have a rectangle on all sides. How many faces does a rectangle your, your prism have? Two, four, six. Six faces for a rectangular prism. You've got a rectangle on the bottom and a rectangle on the top, and those are parallel. Okay? A triangular prism will have a triangle base, a triangle on the top and the bottom, and then all the sides are rectangles. There are three rectangles, triangle base, triangle base, three rectangular faces, okay? A cylinder is a type of prism. It's a prism because it has a circle on the, oops, circle on one end and a circle on the other end. Typical of a soup can that you would have in your home. Base, base, triangle, um, circle. And then here is a, the lateral face if you stretched it out. A lot of people wonder, can I stretch that out if it's a cylinder? You can. It makes a rectangle. It makes a rectangle. All right? So that's a cylinder. It is an example of a prism because it has two bases. A pyramid, and there are different kinds of pyramids depending upon the bases. Um, this is one type of pyramid, <coughs> excuse me, a square pyramid, 
because it has a square at the base. Now because it has a square, you can tell how many triangles are going to be all the way around. Because the bottom is a square, and a square has four sides, you're going to have four triangles all the way around, faces. Four triangular faces. This is called a square pyramid, one base. Um, you could also have a rectangular, let me see if I have one, I don't think I have one. You could have a rectangular pyramid, and a rectangular pyramid would simply have a rectangle on the bottom. Again, it would give you four triangle faces around the edge because the bottom has four shapes. Um, and you can also have a triangular pyramid, triangle as your base. Again, it comes to a point. And then all the way around, because of the base has three sides, you have three tri um, triangular faces all the way around, creating the pyramid. So we've got triangular pyramid, square pyramid, and you can also have a rectangular pyramid. Now, what happens if the bottom is a circle? Do you know what you call that? Good, a cone. The bottom is a circle. It's one base, one base, so it is a pyramid, and it has a special name because it has that special shape on the bottom. <coughs> Circles are such special shapes that anything revol revolving around a circle will have a special name. Circles have special formulas with the pi. We've got a special kind of pyramid called a cone. If you take this and also make a, you can make a sphere. It's all made up of circles. All those circle shapes have special names. So this is a cone. The base, the one base is a circle. And then you've got a lateral face that goes around. Do you know what that shape would be? Almost a half circle. Almost. All right. Um, finally, you have a sphere on your chart. A sphere, of course, is like a, a playground ball that you might have. A sphere is um, made up of circles. It's perfectly round. It has no faces because there is not, it's not flat in any way, shape, or form. Um, it, you will use a special formula for a sphere because it is that special shape. It doesn't have any flat edges. So there is a special formula for that that we'll go over in class as well. But I just want you to be familiar with all the different types of shapes. Again, prisms have two bases. Pyramids have one. That's real important if you haven't written that down. Jot that down. And a lot of times you're going to name your shape based upon the bottom or the base. Right? Go ahead and label your notes with yellow. I'm not so sure I understand all those, all those vocabulary words, all those pieces of information. What is that base again? What? I'm not really sure. Orange for I've got it. I'm good to go. I'm ready to name them. And red, it's kind of hard to be an expert on this, but maybe you're an expert if you know all the formulas for those shapes. If you want all the formulas, go ahead and um, color your notes red. Otherwise, you're probably a yellow or an orange. Go ahead and label your notes, and we'll see you next time, and we'll talk about using those nets. We're going to be creating some in class. See you soon.